Then we have Surah Al-Duha. I'm sure we all know it off by heart, or a lot of us would know it off by heart. We read it this evening in Salat Al-Taraweeh. In this Surah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes mention of something very, very powerful. And I invite you to read this Surah as well as the next one. It is called Al-Sharh or Alam Nashrah. So you have Al-Duha, which is known as Wal-Duha, Wal-Layli Ida Saja. And the next Surah, which is Alam Nashrah, Laka Sadrak. I invite you to read these Surahs with the English meaning in order to see how powerful they are when a person is in distress and how Allah is comforting Muhammad by telling him something, a message that every one of us needs. Do you want to hear it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a hadith of Jundub ibn Sufyan, muttafaqun alayhi. He says, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, he took a bit of time to come with revelation in the beginning. So revelation had come and then there was a pause for a time. And during this pause, you know, the mushrikeen happened to make statements and various people said so many things. And some people said, oh, you know what? Uh, this angel has now abandoned Muhammad sallallahu And when the next time Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam came, Surah Al-Duha was revealed. And Allah says, verse number three of that surah, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَىٰ your Rabb, your Lord has not abandoned you, nor does he detest you. He's not detested you. He does not dislike you. He's not angry with you and he has not abandoned you. The fact that there was a delay in revelation does not mean that Allah hates you, dislikes you, does not love you, has abandoned you. And Allah says later on, very soon your Lord will give you so much until you are absolutely pleased. My brothers and sisters, the message is for myself and yourselves. In life, we make dua, we call out to Allah. And sometimes what we want does not happen immediately. So we begin to think, Allah has abandoned me. Allah didn't listen to me. Perhaps Allah doesn't like me. Perhaps he's detested me. Perhaps he's angry with me. But I am asking Allah's forgiveness every day. Wait, when the time is right, even if it means 10 years from now, then it will come. And if Allah knows it's not good for you, he did not abandon you. He's not giving it to you because he knows it will be damaging for you. That's Allah's blessing. So don't think because you don't have what you want, that the one who owns the giving is upset with you. Don't think that, not even for a moment. That's actually shaitan coming to you. Yes, we should be checking ourselves. Is my life in order? Am I reading my salah? Am I on the right page, inshallah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Meaning, am I doing that which will earn the pleasure of Allah? If you are trying and you are seeking forgiveness and you are a person who's really calling out to Allah with a soft heart, don't think for a moment that Allah's abandoned you. He knows best when to give you what you want. And if he knows he won't, he won't. And Allah says, soon he will give you so much, you will be happy. Did you know that whenever you call out to Allah, that, uh, that prayer is always answered, always, in one of a few ways. One of them, He gives you what you want immediately there and now. Allahu Akbar. There and then. The other is He delays it and gives you a little bit later on. And the other is He replaces it with one of two things. Either He removes from your life a difficulty that you may have been destined to face. But at the same time, He removed it because of your dua. Or sometimes he gives you something else in return. Or he holds it and gives you in the hereafter something really grand and great in return for all the du'as you used to make. So much so, I can just imagine a person arriving on the day of judgment and he sees heaps of very, very good deeds and heaps of everything he wants in Jannah. And he is told, you know what? This was all the dua and the supplications you made to us that we did not give you in the world. We kept it in store for you here in paradise. Wouldn't you like that? Subhanallah. Still, I remember speaking to a young man. He said, no, no, no. I want what I'm asking for here. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease and iman and goodness. And yes, you must make your dua and you must continue passionately calling out to Allah without losing hope regarding what you want for as long as it's something permissible. That itself is part of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.